Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, wake up, David. Mm, Stop poking me in the ribs. You're awake, you faker. Very. Well, then why are you lying there not even talking? Get up, get up. Plenty of time. Now, don't rush me. We're in New York, remember? So it'll only take me ten minutes to get to the office. Good night. Listen, you're not going to have ten minutes left to get to the office if you say good night to me like that. David, open your big blue eyes. Brown. Well, open them or I'll make them black. Oh, what a pleasant little wife I married. (laughs) She resents seeing her husband sleep in the morning. The one morning he doesn't have to commute all the way to New York. Doesn't have to milk the cows and feed the chickens and pitch hay before he leaves. The one single morning he's only ten minutes from the office. All right, not another word from me. Only I happen to know you're the kind of man who gets up when he's awake. Mm, How fastidious of me. Except when he's sick. David, you feeling all right? Oh, you win. I'll get up. No hurry. No hurry. I just wanted to be sure you felt all right. How'd you sleep in the city? Same as in Eastbrook, in bed. My, how fastidious of you. You know, I do miss the farm and Bobby and everything. But it's nice being back at Mama's, isn't it? Mm -hmm, Very nice being back at Mama's. I hope Mama likes it as well as we do. Who cares? You're a fine, upstanding daughter. Mm, I certainly am. I'm going to be upstanding this minute. I'm getting up. I have to unpack. Well, maybe we'd better unpack after we've been invited to stay here another night. So you're not going to go and get formal with Mama all of a sudden? Not after all these years, I hope. Mm. Well, that's the time to get formal. Mama wouldn't put up with it. Well, you put up with your slippers. Floors are warmer in New York. (laughs) Darling, look. What? There's nothing to see when I look out the window. Except buildings with windows with the shades pulled down and streets waking up and taxis and cars... What more do you want us to There's not one tree, not one hill, not one red barn. It's practically pathetic. Oh, it's New York. Oh, is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Say, David, how long are we going to be in town anyway? We just got here yesterday. Is that all? Then we'll be here until we leave. David, you are brilliant, but not bright. I should say we'll be here until the end of the week at least. Four more days. Now, don't pretend that you're so surprised. <sighs> you brought in enough clothing to last a month. Just to be safe. (laughs) Just to be safe, nothing. Just so you won't have to send anything to the laundry. I know you. Perfectly outrageous, the prices laundries charge in New York. Now, hush up. I'm unpacking. I want to concentrate. Darling, don't you think we ought to go to a hotel? Three pairs of socks. I'm not sure whether it's fair to Mama to stay here so long. One bathrobe. I know she likes to have us, but... Six shorts. I know that she'd tell us if she didn't, or wouldn't she? Eight. But it certainly does clutter up her house. Twelve razor blades. Twelve razor blades? Why twelve razor blades? They're so little. I suppose you will make me shave twice a day to use them up. David, honestly, I had a corner in the suitcase that would have raffled. I mind your own business. Go on. Claudia, have you heard one word that I was saying? Was it important? Oh, no, 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 no. I was just talking to hear myself talk. Well, I do that sometimes, too. Well, I don't. But you just said you... I just said I wasn't sure we ought to stay here at Mama's. David, why didn't you say so sooner? I have it all unpacked. I said so sooner. Well, not sooner enough. The suitcase is empty. Now, look, Claudia, come over here and sit down and listen to me. Oh, I love you when you get bossy. Now, be serious. Yes, darling, anything. Now, look, do you honestly think we ought to barge in on Mama and stay here? David, it's all settled. We're here. We've barged already. Well, we don't have to stay here. Not for the rest of the time we're going to be in town. Oh, David, Mom would be terribly offended if we left now. Why, it'd be like 
Like taking one taste of something and pushing your plate away, not eating the rest. Oh. David, you know how that hurts a hostess's feelings. I suppose that there is no point in trying to talk to you sensibly. Sensibly, David. Let's stay. Well, it would be nicer for you. I'm going to be out on business a lot. And it'll be nicer for Mama, too. Hmm. Conceited little wench, aren't you? No. I'm not being a mama baby either, David. Who said you were? Well, I might. It's just that eating one lamb chop's no fun. Listening to the radio alone or reading a book alone is no fun, David. Even for mama. Well, don't you try and put yourself in mama's shoes, darling. Mama is a very independent woman. I know, but it's one thing to be independent out of choice, and it's quite another thing to be independent because you have to be independent. Oh, I don't know how you can be so smart when you're so dumb. It's my charm. Come on, kiss me, and then get up. Mm, yes, ma'am. Well, listen to him. See, I hear Mama moving inside. You know, that woman is probably getting breakfast ready. Well, now, stop pretending disappointment. Listen, let's have breakfast in our robes. They tell me it's very proper in New York. Will you come out as soon as you've brushed and combed, David? Mm, just as soon as I've brushed and combed. Figaro, figaro, figaro. Mama, what are you doing in the kitchen? Feeding the chickens. Oh, well, if you're making eggs, David likes them four minutes. I know David likes them four minutes. I made them for him before. Good morning. Good morning, Mama. You're looking very refreshed. How'd you sleep? I slept very well, thank you. So do we. The accommodations are superb. I've always liked them, too. Oh, Mama, it's a beautiful day, all sunshiny looking. Oh, here, Ma, let me take that coffee. Get away. That's my house. Let me make it. Why let you make the coffee in my house? That was wisdom. Well, just for that, make your own coffee. See if I care. I care. Thank you. I'll set the table. It's all set. Mom, have you been doing chores all night? I have. Why? Sometimes I don't think you have the brains I was born with. Well, don't blame me. Blame yourself. Coming in unexpected. Not giving a poor old woman a fair notice. Oh. Camping in her apartment. Well, oh, good morning, good morning, good morning. And what kind of a hotel do you think this is? Coming into the dining room in your robes? We think it is the most informal hotel in New York. David, Mama's complaining again. Oh, what about this time? About us. Course. And what have we done now? We are here. So we are. Terrible, isn't it? It's awful. I see. A good night's sleep has done neither of you any benefit. I like my eggs three minutes, Mama. I like mine four minutes, Mama. Look, David, I know you like yours four. That makes uh, seven minutes in all, doesn't it? Mmm, that coffee smells good. Almost as good as the coffee you make, Claudia. Did you hear that, Mama? My coffee. He's just talking sweet talk. Very diplomatic of him. David, if Mama's going to sabotage me all the time we're here, maybe we had better think twice. Even once would be a novelty. David, marmalade or jam? Ooh, uh, both. It's a good thing you're leaving today, or I'd be eaten out of house and home. <laughs> Uh-oh. Shall we uh, tell her, David? Yeah. Go ahead. Plunge. Don't keep her in suspense. Mama, break all of your dates for the next five days. What did you say? David found out last night he has to stay in New York till next week. Until next week? Yes, until next week. So break your dates, you're booked from now on. I'm not sure my social calendar can stand this shock. Well, then just break your social calendar. What happened, David? Why are you staying? Well, Mama, we have a lot of work piled up at the office. We'll have a lot of evening meetings. And I'll be rushing around. Besides, Claudia can stand a little city life for a change. Well... What hotel are you going to stay at? Are you going to be able to get reservations? We, uh, have reservations. Mm-hmm. Lots of reservations. Mm, lots really? of them. Well, you didn't have any last night. That was last night. Because you don't think I'd have taken you in like this if you hadn't been orphans in the storm. Oh. When did you make your reservations? Oh, last night. Oh. A uh, nice little hotel? Yes, yes, yes. It's, uh, it's lovely. Oh, lovely. A hotel which prides itself on an atmosphere just like home. Oh, you're very lucky. Yes, yes, we are. Well, the eggs are all ready. Good. Come on in. I'll carry the coffee. I have the eggs and the toast is on the table. Pass me the orange juice, will you, Claudia? Hmm, yeah, here. What hotel is it, David? Oh, just a small, convenient little place that Claudia told me about. Stop frowning, Mom. It's a very inexpensive hotel. When are you going to move over there? Oh, uh, sometime or other. That's what I like about you. You're so definite. 
I'll help you pack. She certainly is in a hurry to get rid of us, David. Mm Mm-hmm. Unfriendly old girl, isn't she? Terribly, terribly. Inhospitable. Makes me feel like we're not wanted. You are not. Say, you're not offended, are you, Mama? No. And you're old enough to live by yourself. Both of you. Besides, I know what a weakness my daughter has for hotels. I adore them. Well? I like hotels, too. Something quite romantic about them. And you're not alone. How are your eggs, David? Oh, my eggs are fine. Just right, Mrs. Brown. As a matter of fact, everything is just right. Yes. Everything. Three of us again. Well, guess I better start running along. I'll, um, I'll pick you up here for dinner. David, why don't we meet you at the hotel? That'll make it simpler for you. I said that I will pick you up here. She's not very bright, my mama. No, she is only your mama. Just exactly what do you expect of her? Too much, I suppose. (laughs) David, why don't we just have dinner here, darling? Dinner here? Yeah. Uh, Won't that uh, be a lot of trouble for you? Well, I... No, 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 no trouble for me at all. And then you can come home and take a bath and shave before, Mm. without rushing. Take a bath and shave before. Well, of course, that that would make it a lot easier for you. Worse, but I Uh, thought that you... uh, Uh, What would you like to eat? Whatever you like to eat, Mama will fix. She cooks fine. She does. But Mm -hmm. I thought that you... Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. What, Mama? Oh, no. You haven't. Haven't we, uh, haven't what? You have moved in on me. Oh, well, just for a few days, Mama. Five or six. Yes, just a few days, five or six. We'll uh, we'll be gone long before you know it. The way we came, folding our tents like the Arabs in the night. Mm-hmm. So you have moved in on me. Well, now, Mama, it's only sensible. After all, look, it's an awful waste to throw our sheets in the laundry when we've used them only once. Yes, we only slept on them last night, Must you know. Must admit that. And you have to cook for you. You might as well cook for us, too. No trouble. Three can eat as cheaply as one. Of course. <laughs> and the room is here. It's right Near there. David's office. That's right. Only ten minutes. Why well, travel between here and a hotel all day? Mm-hmm. It's absolutely ridiculous. And can you see any now, reason, Mama? Besides, Mama, now you stop. really know. Claudia, stop rationalizing. It's perfectly obvious you've taken over. And I have no life of my own. Do you mind, Mother? No, David. I don't mind. I have no life of my own, and it's wonderful. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. If your working hours are like those of most housewives, the eight-hour day sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Why not borrow an idea from those who punch time clocks? When workers need to relax, they pause and refresh with ice-cold Coca-Cola. Keep Coke on ice, and you can work refreshed, just as they do in offices and factories and shops these days. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. <laughs>